it finally happened. I would like to preference this review before we start that Game Mill, surprisingly, despite my years of bashing their games, actually sent me a review copy. So I have uh, many a time spoken about how bad their kart racing games are, but uh, yeah, apparently they still wanted to send me a review copy. So I would just like to say that all my opinions and all that type of stuff expressed in this video are my own. Uh, they have given me no like sheet of what I can or can't talk about. There are no rules or anything like that. They don't get to preview this. They have no takes on it, no ability to edit or anything like that. This review, the first time they will see it is the first time you're seeing it. So I just like to preface reference all of that. And I'd also like to say that I already pre-ordered this game and actually paid for it. So yes, I'm getting a free game, but I had already paid for it. So that's also not really affecting my opinion with this either. Anyway, on with the review. All right, so if you know me, you know I don't like fighting games. I bought Smash Bros for the Wii U and I just could not be bothered with it. I dislike the Smash Bros community with a burning passion. To me, it represents just about the absolute worst of the Nintendo fan base. And I like Nintendo. I got a Switch. Do I use it? Rarely. But I own it. I bought a Wii U day one. <laughs> Regretted that one, but hey, so yeah. I dislike the Smash community, and that has always tainted the games for me. But I played Brawl a heap as a kid. I played the story mode, but... You know, so, and I'm also, because I'm not a huge Nintendo fan, having a specific character in the game is never interesting to me. Like, I don't care if Wario is in the game or whatever, and I don't care if there's a guy from Xenoblade or whatever. But I will say, when they did announce Joker was in it, I got pretty interested, but it doesn't matter. My point is, Smash Bros isn't a series I've ever cared about. On a gameplay metric, I like it though. It's easy to jump into and just button mash, but there is clear depth. My issue of the series has been that, that there's a big jump between button mashing and actually being able to use some of that depth. Till you've completely crossed over into being able to use those attacks to at least some level of uh, consistency, I find it, it's usually still easy to be beaten by someone just button mashing. So yet again, and that's also only based off me playing Brawl as a kid and playing maybe 10 to 15 hours of the Wii U game with some friends over like a few weeks. I know the game can be mastered and can be mastered very well, but button mashing works a bit too well to ever really be bothered with getting good at it. Unless you're going to invest hundreds of hours. Button mashing is just a little bit too good. And that's been my experience with both Smash Bros and fighting games in general. Basically, I'm saying I'm bad at them and lazy, and I don't want to get good at them because being lazy is often better than being decent or okay at them. And you've got to be decent and okay before you're good. But then, a new challenger arose. Just as the flame was dying out on that 47th Smash Bros game or whatever it is. And everyone was kind of getting a little bit bored and tired of the current Smash Bros game and a bit tired of the whole toxic community stuff. A challenger that for some god knows reason was actually, like, it actually stood a chance of being good. Weird. Nickelodeon Brawl. All-Stars. PlayStation All-Stars. Damn, that's the most generic name ever. <laughs> so, if you're like me and hopped onto Twitter one day, you just got absolutely smashed by this, like, tirade of memes. Oh, the memes. Looks like memes. you're going. The, the freshest Nickelodeon memes. memes. Oh, it's just dumb streets. Oh, it was a good day. A glorious day. Oh, my lord, it's Nigel. Look at that. He looks so good with them. Helga, that red guy, random cartoon character, and Ninja Turtle. God damn it, Game Mill. Every time, every one of your games, you just pump it full of Ninja Turtles. Just stop it. So yeah, Nickelodeon Brawl got announced. It was pretty epic, man. We all started talking about who we're gonna main. The game kind of blew up. It was announced, and we all got like pretty excited. And we we're gonna get DLC characters, hashtag Jimmy's dad confirmed. This is gonna be epic, okay? Best day of the year. Hottest, toppest memes for like an hour. And then I I forgot about it. I, I literally completely forgot about it till I got my review copy. So Nick Brawl is a Smash Bros clone as far as I can tell with my hashtag uncultured eyes. Everything is the same but I haven't played the new game and I haven't played a Smash Bros game in like three years so my memory can be fuzzy at times but yeah it's about the same I think. You hit people with a main attack button, you've got a heavier attack button and then a special attack button. Each does a different attack depending on the direction you're pointing. You have a block, a dashy thing, a taunt and a grab. Each character has different moves, speeds and all that type of jazz. 
You own up to four other players or CPUs battle out in stock matches on a variety of different stages. There are time trials, sports, and others where you gotta beat a series of CPUs and stuff like that. There is online, local multiplayer, and single player, but no story mode or anything like that, sadly. Lots of stuff to do, and I'm probably missing out on a few things, but that's just about everything you can do. So the character selection is weird, okay? Let's just let's just put that out there. It's weird. Once again, Game Mill has squeezed in as many Ninja Turtles as they possibly can. I, it's stupid, okay? Just make one, all right? And then have the rest be costume options, okay? Stop doing it. I hate it. I hate you. Stop. But yeah, some of the choices are weird, like how you have Helga, but no Arnold? Why? I know there's, there's going to be like characters for DLC and stuff like that, but the fact is, they weren't going to do DLC till the game blew up. So this was originally all we were going to get, which is weird. But yeah, so I mostly played as Cat Dog and of course the Hugh Neutron stand-in, Nigel MC Thornberry, the OG GOAT. My brother made Helga whenever we would play together. Characters are fun and varied. I don't know how to tell if a character is bad or not, or if they are designed badly with a bad move set, or if I'm just bad, so I'll leave that to people who actually know the, the difference. For me, Nigel wasn't very fun to play most of the time. I know, I know, shocking. His special moves felt a little limited. His whole click thing, you had, you had to be so pinpoint accurate with that. But I reckon I could get better. Danny Phantom and Helga looked like fun, and Danny's ability to teleport looked like I could absolutely abuse the hell out of that if I got good with it, but my brother played them mostly. Reptile was also fun, and I, my god, I would absolutely love it if they added all grown up like Tommy or Chucky as playable characters. That would be so cool. Also, Tia Tyler Gulch. What? Oh my... What? We got that's amazing. All in all, the roster is fine. Better than it was in the racing games, and I'm just glad JoJo, or whatever her name is, isn't here. I literally wouldn't buy the game if you paid me to, if people like iCarly were here. I ain't got no time for that, okay? I'm just here for the cartoon characters. So yeah, the roster is limited, some choices are weird, and I have no idea what or who these characters are, and I don't care. Why are there so many turtles? Who is this? But all in all, it's it's good and they're fun to play as, and it's, that's on a casual level. Like, if there, I'm sure there are people out there who can go much more in depth of all this, but from a casual, it's pretty fun. And I feel like any of them could be pretty strong and fun to play. SpongeBob is OP, and where are the fairly odd parents? Stages 2 are really fun though, I love the design of them, I love the design of the characters in general. Taking 2D characters and moving them to 3D can be weird, but they've done a great job here, including the stages. My only real critique is they can often be a bit visually busy and can make movement hard to see, especially if you're playing with 4 CPUs or if you aren't in lockdown like me, uh, for real people, but other than some, some being a little visually busy, they're all pretty fun and I enjoyed them all. But what are we really here for? It's for the now canonical battle between these absolute legends. Helga versus Patrick, let's go, who's gonna win? Nigel Thornberry versus Toastman, come on Nigel, give him the old one, two. Smashing. None of y'all are ready, okay, for the cheeks. All right, take that, Corey, your last season was a five out of 10 best. Oh my God, the Battle of Brothers. Oh, except no one cares about the Ninja Turtles. Get them out of here, it's cat dog time, let's go. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, who's it? It's Invader oh, Zip, I didn't even know he was in this game. Yeah, I'm I'm just really glad that Nickelodeon went out on a limb and made all this officially canonical. I'm, I'm really glad that that's now the, the case. Now Game Mill, my boy, my darling, you guys, are getting better, you've improved, you're making better stuff, and that's a good thing. I don't know if Game Mill even made this game, or if they produced it, I don't care. <clears throat> but Game Mill, the voices, please, okay? I know they're gonna patch it in, but my god, this game needs it. The game actually has way more character than it should, but it needs those voices. It'll take this to a whole other level, so please, give it to us soon, okay? Please. And don't screw up those DLC characters, okay? Hugh Neutron confirmed, come on, let's go. So yeah, memes aside, this is actually just a really fun game. I think it comes down to the fact that because it's a blatant Smash clone, it's so much less pretentious. It doesn't need to make these stupid faux epic trailers. The concept of Smash Bros is stupid and this game leans into that stupidity and doesn't get carried away by trying to be more than that. 
meaning it doesn't fall into the trap that PlayStation did. It's lighthearted, it's fun, it doesn't take itself seriously, and it's actually way more fun to play because of that. The fan base spends all of its time memeing rather than arguing over what character to add next. It's great, and because of that, I actually want to get good at the game. I want to improve, I want to learn, I want to master it, I want to actually main a character. Because the game is less self-absorbed and less self, like, full of itself, to be fair, the community is also about like 10% less toxic, or so that's, yeah, that's a positive. It's actually a game I can see myself playing heaps more of in the future, especially with DLC characters on the way, proper online, character voices coming in the future. So yeah, after all of my years of bashing your past games, Ludosity, Fair Play Labs, Game Mill, Maximum Games, you all made a really good game here. Yeah, it's a clone, but it literally avoids all my issues with the game it's cloning and just about all my issues are gonna be patched or fixed later. It literally just installed a four gigabyte update like yesterday. I don't know what it did, but hey, a Nickelodeon game is getting updates. That's still crazy to me. Yeah, the UI looks cheap as, there are a fair few issues, but it's fun and that's kind of all it needs to really be. Would I recommend buying it now? Maybe. It's nearly Christmas, so it'll probably go on sale, but unlike with the racing games, this one's actually not a waste of money. Oh, yep, so I'm gonna be streaming this game in the future, so subscribe for that, and also check out my second channel called Cheetles, where you can check out the VODs and some other live streams for other games. Check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.